So Roger Stone uh, joins us, former Trump campaign head, Trump confidant, uh, worked in many administrations. Uh, we have stonecoldtruth.com. Now, both of his books are sold at InfoWarsStore.com. We had Michael Savage on earlier. So much to cover, so much to go over. We have the vice presidential candidate, Tim Kaine, attacking me yesterday, saying I'm racist with no evidence. Uh, it seems like they've gone into total freefall. Am I wrong to say that they are crashing and burning currently Roger Stone? You know, uh, if this wasn't so serious, I'd be laughing, Alex. I mean, this is an absurdity. Uh, notice how in the wake of the questions, very serious questions about Hillary's health, they're trying to revive the David Duke controversy. Please give me a break. Uh, Mike Pence made it very, very abundantly clear. Both Trump and Pence repudiate and do not want the support of David Duke. This is a smokescreen because they don't want to talk about Hillary's health. Now, in all honesty, what I feel here is vindication. Because only 10 days ago, and you played this on this network, uh, the Clinton people in a written statement blamed me for the entire question of her health. And by the way, I want to be clear, Roger, we don't normally talk about ourselves, but but I had a guest on yesterday and he pointed out, Dr. Pachenik, we have to because we've been so demonized. We have been Drudge, you, myself, all of us have been absolutely, because we're, we've been the ones attacked, Matt Drudge. Roger Stone, Alex Jones, we're the main ones. We're supposedly the ones that, no, she's falling down everywhere. She's had brain surgeries. Her Secret Service has contacted us. We have been vindicated with a royal flush. Go ahead. No question about it. I mean, they said that this was a, uh, a conspiracy theory put forward by right-wing conspiracy theorist Roger Stone. Well, conspiracy theory not. Uh, we're operating on the basis of our own observations. Now she collapses in 80 degree weather, first claiming it was heat prostration, then claiming it's pneumonia, at the same time saying that she was romping in Chelsea's apartment with her grandchildren. It just doesn't meet the smell test. Hillary Clinton has something visibly wrong with her. I doubt she has the stamina to go toe to toe with Donald Trump for 90 minutes. No bathroom break. Where is she right now? No She's only doing break. phones. She's only doing phone conversations. Right. Well, that's because they don't want you to see her. I'm predicting right now she backs out of the debates uh, because she can't go toe to toe with Donald J. Trump for 90 minutes without a break. Uh, we got to keep an eye open for the uh, earpiece. She clearly was wearing an earpiece. No conspiracy theory, folks. You can see it with your own two eyes. Now, based on her FBI interview regarding her email server, she clearly has no memory. Perhaps that's why she needs somebody feeding her the answers by earpiece. Uh, no conspiracy, folks. You can see the earpiece. And by the way, uh, you can't make this up. We looked at the photos they released, the campaign saying no one. They're so lazy, they pixelated and didn't even compress it a new layer. You can see where they blurred the earpiece. They are literally falling apart in front of us. Yeah, and, and uh, they have uh, changed her hairdo to try to cover the eyepiece. There's something very intrinsically wrong. Now, and by the way, if folks say she's their own woman, as you said earlier, we were talking this morning. They have the guy running up beside her when someone asks a question saying, it's okay, it's okay. She is in and out of reality. The word is a brain tumor, Roger. Well, look, I, I don't know whether it's Parkinson's or epilepsy or a brain tumor. I've been attacked, I've been approached uh, and uh, contacted by numerous uh, eminent and prominent doctors who just on the basis of their observations have put forward various theories. Well, the brain tumor causes the epilepsy and the Parkinson's. Well, that, that may be. Here's what I know. Uh, High-level Democrats have begun talking about replacing her on the ticket. Were she to be incapacitated or were, were her to drop or be unable to move forward, the Democratic National Committee chooses in one meeting uh, her replacement. Uh, and the word and I'm told those meetings are ongoing. That's now admitted. So who do you think they may pick? I mean, I mean, I was hearing from you this morning about a certain woman. Yes, I think that this uh, that they would go to. Uh, well, I don't think my source, who is a very high level and prominent Democrat, tells me that they would go to Michelle Obama. They can't resist the feminist wing of their party. These women are salivating over the first woman president, even if it's Hillary. Uh, and therefore, they would brook no dissension from the feminists by choosing uh, Michelle Obama. The disdain for the Clintons by Barack and Michelle Obama is well known. Uh, Joe Biden has a has a, a little bit of a grabby problem with women and with children. 
They know that old Uncle Joe would not stand up in a campaign. Uh, Tim Kaine would be giving away the franchise. No, I'm almost certain that Hillary Clinton will be replaced by Michelle Obama uh, if she uh, throws in the towel. But meanwhile, the Democrats' main concern is that Donald Trump Jr. is hunting triceratops. Yeah, hunting animals that literally don't exist uh, in our time. This is the hysteria of the left. Anything to change the subject from the question of Hillary's health. Roger, you've got a lot of their big bombshells here. But overall, what do you make of this time? I mean, I know you're a realist, not an optimist. So am I. I got to tell you, we are kicking their ass right now. I mean, they are in deep crap. Well, I give Steve Bannon enormous credit for stabilizing uh, the good ship Trump. Trump is really performing a as a candidate. I think he's... Yeah, he seems like he's picking up great energy from being around these patriots. Well, and not only that, but this misstep of her uh, branding uh, you and I uh, and Milo and others as deplorables. And uh, saying look, we have no right to exist. Don't forget that. Well, look, uh, yeah, kind of like Israel, we have no right to exist. Look. Uh, I'm proud to be a deplorable if that means I'm thrown into a grab bag with you uh, and many other patriots. But I don't like the fact that Hillary is denigrating average people, house homemakers, farmers. It shows her disconnect that Obama got caught with bitter clingers in a secret meeting. She's out in speeches saying half are bad. Her minions say we're all bad. Let's talk about that disconnect because I think this is the magic moment. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, when I put up the meme, that had photos of the most prominent deplorables, Trump, Spence, uh, Ivanka, uh, Donald Jr., Eric, Alex Jones, uh, and others, the left went absolutely crazy because there's a frog there, some frog who uh, is put there because uh, he's so cocky. I'm proud to be in this meme. Uh, the Hill wrote about it. I think last time I looked, there were 10,000 people who had retweeted it. Uh, we're, it we're mocking them. See, the left has no sense of humor. These folks have no sense of humor. Uh, but this reminds me of Mitt Romney in the 47%. When he uh, wrote off 47% of the voters, why the, sky, the skies fell in. It was Armageddon. The mainstream media went crazy. He when just he mildly said 47% are being taken care of. They don't care. She's saying we're deplorable. Well, and, and she denigrates average people. She's denigrating Trump's voters. Who are supporting him in good faith so uh it's elitism is what it is alex uh and to me it's it's repugnant which is why i chose to mock her with that particular image you're absolutely right and and, and they just uh, she's obviously deteriorating quickly and and i've got sources that say it is brain tumor metastasization the first tumor removed 2012 i mean we have the secret service that said she's got lifts on the vehicles is falling down you see it i mean that's real secret service you were there with us when we were like mobbed by the Secret Service like rock stars. I've never seen them act like that, but they've seen the criminality. Uh, I just think, that um, how are they going to strike back, though, Roger Stone? Well, I think they're getting painted into a quarter corner. They're, I think that one of the reasons that they are panicky is because the negative campaign plan to just uh, disqualify Trump has failed. They, they, they pulled their whole bag of tricks. He's a bigot. He's a racist. He's mentally unstable. He's trigger happy. He'll start a war. All those things are false. The American people aren't buying. And that's why they're panicky, because in the 1980s playbook that they use, this should have blown Trump away. This should be a 10 point race today. And it's not. It's either even or Trump may be slightly ahead. Uh, her candidacy is imploding before our very eyes. It just shows you two things. One that the power lust and the greed of the Clintons is unabated. With both of them in poor health, with both of them having lacking the stamina for a national campaign, they still are grabbing for the golden ring. Then secondarily, the other thing we see is that their decades old abuse of the Secret Service, who they've called pigs and who they treat like servants, comes back to bite them when Secret Service agents leaked the fact that she is gravely ill and that she has no stamina. So uh, they have reaped what the Clintons have sown. What do we do next? Well, I think that we continue exactly where we are. All of this, Alex, increases the odds that they will attempt to steal this election through machine manipulation. 
that's why I started StopToSteal.org. That's why we are organizing uh, scientifically conducted exit polls that we can compare to the machine results in a, on a precinct by precinct basis in targeted counties and targeted states where we suspect the steel will be afoot. I also commend to you Dr. Richard Davis's program, which will be announced shortly, Poll Mole, building a national multi-million sample daily poll so we can show the voters where this uh, race really is. Those are key programs that can be used to ensure that we have an honest election. All of this tempts the Clintons and the machine Democrats to steal this election, not just through voter fraud, but through machine manipulation. No, folks, it's not far-fetched. No, it's not outlandish. It's not, as Barack Obama said, ridiculous. Terrific piece on Fox last night with Brett Baer talking about multiple examples of people voting multiple times, people voting in several states at the same time. One guy- Sure, sure, our audience is informed, but let me ask you this then. With everything they say blowing up in their face, like a Greek tragedy or biblically, uh, oh, well, there's no election fraud, but we're federalizing it. Oh, we're not sick, but we're falling down and having convulsions. It just seems like history is on our side. I mean, the, the, there seems to be magic in the air. People I know that aren't even religious are saying it seems like God's doing this. Well, the large number of African Americans who just come up to me in the street recognize me from Infowars and other places as Trump's guy. They don't even know my name, but they want to high five me. Uh, this whole idea that Trump is a racist is going to get disproven on Election Day when I predict to you he gets the highest percentage of African American votes of any Republican in my lifetime. He's going to. Well, the polls already show that, and that's what's freaking him out is that they're 54 days out from the election. And everything they're doing is turning into crap. Well, the Clintons want to keep black folks on the plantation. Donald Trump wants to make them prosperous, wants to get them a piece of the American pie, wants to make them employers, not employees. And black folks I talk to get it. They totally get it. They're tired of being used and, and, uh, and uh, forsaken by the Democrats uh, at election time. If you look at the employment statistics for African-Americans or for Hispanics, for that matter, under this current president or under Bill Clinton, they are disgraceful. I guarantee you Donald Trump can do better. And as you say, they are, well, globalism is designed to make us poor. So if he just takes his, you know, the foot off our neck, it'll help. Exactly. But you mentioned Tim Kaine, the, the VP candidate, who they're trying to float back there in the background, but you think it'll be Michelle Obama. He comes in, mentions David Duke yesterday, who has no connection to Trump, and then ties it into me uh, I mean, why are they going after us so much? Here's that clip. It's very clear to all of us that the Trump campaign has given a platform. You can call them whatever you want, the alt-right movement or others. But when uh, when David Duke is doing robocalls saying vote for Donald Trump and others uh, who are kind of at the very fringe of the conspiracy movement, like Alex Jones, are being kind of incorporated uh, into the campaign in ways, it's a, or even the recent choices of campaign management, this is something that is really important. And I okay, think Okay, so now he connects call it out. David Duke to myself and Stephen Bannon with no proof. I mean, this is outrageous. I'm kind of disappointed, in all honesty, that he didn't mention me, in all honesty. It's it's gravely disappointing. Look, the Communist Party of the United States has endorsed Hillary. There are Ku Klux Klan chapters that have endorsed Hillary. How come we don't talk about that? How come that's never in the mainstream media? I'll tell you why. Because it's extraneous. And that was extraneous. By the way, the T-shirt showing with the open shirt, really bad look. Really bad look. I know you got some big news breaking in the next few days at stonecoldtruth.com and infowars.com. Can we get into that a little bit or should we save it? Well, I think that uh, that there's going to be a public examination of how and why Gaddafi was removed in Libya uh, that is going to truly shock people. Now, I don't want to telegraph our punches, so I don't want to get any further out there. But let's but just say it's WikiLeaks level. Without any question, it will rock this entire race. Let's well, leave it right. please coordinate closely. I mean, I know you're saying you're going to let us put it out, but please coordinate closely because I want to get this. This is powerful. I mean, this is smoking yeah. gun. Yeah, I, it is. Uh, it is just around the bend. There has been enormous research done regarding the removal of Gaddafi uh, that will speak to both Hillary's motive means uh, and the way it was done. 
that I think is going to shock people. Let's sum it up this way. Black lives matter unless you live in Libya, in which case Hillary borrows a billion dollars to bomb you into submission. And Gaddafi was ready to walk. And she just wanted to blow the hell out of the country. Well, too many of her major benefactors at the Clinton Foundation had a major stake in the removal of Gaddafi. Now, we don't know where his wealth went. We don't know where his world-class weapons went. But we do know that he had agreed to all the conditions uh, for uh, to leave the country. Uh, this is a stunning story that the American people need to know. Wow. Roger Stone, stonecoldtruth.com. Um, how do you expect him to strike back? Where else do you see this? I mean, uh, other areas we should be watching. Well, uh, the, all the, the only option left to open to them is to come up with some smear of Donald Trump. Uh, but they're getting to the bottom of their bag of tricks. They played all their classic bag of tricks. I'm sure you remember the totally phony lawsuit filed against uh, Trump claiming uh, by an unnamed woman claiming that he had raped her. Completely and totally bogus, false, uh, meant to distract from Bill Clinton's relationship with the child molester and the convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. And by the way, Hillary's top aides, Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills, uh, and the White House social secretary, all of their direct private phone numbers found in Jeffrey Epstein's personal phone book when he was uh, uh, arrested. That's right, Clinton so, flying around on it. So we have a tripling, quadrupling down on lies, a desperate corporate whore media that could do anything. They may say Donald Trump is eating little children. I mean, just get ready for anything. But they're so discredited, it's not going to work. Well, and the toothpaste cannot be put back in the tube. We're not in the 1980s, where the Clintons could mow mow and browbeat the three major networks into covering a story and pretending it's not news. That That's just not going to work anymore. Uh, there's too much exchange of Is it fair to say they're in a total panic right now? Yes, I think they're in meltdown mode because Trump was supposed to be easy to dispatch. Look, if you go back and you I, mean, I remember, he wasn't going to win the nomination. He wasn't, he just, it was all delusion. Well, if you go back and read Hamilton Jordan's memoirs, he tells you that Jimmy Carter fervently wanted to run against Ronald Reagan. He felt that, that George Bush or John Connolly or Howard Baker would have been much tougher. So Reagan was his preferred opponent. Massive miscalculation. Now I believe the Clintons have made the exact same miscalculation. Uh, in Donald Trump, they have a man of enormous courage who has no fear about going anywhere in the and that's why he's winning so many people, marching into those churches, getting out on those hot tarmacs, circumventing the Black Lives Matter thugs, charging in, giving two-hour speeches on 115-degree tarmacs. I mean, it's just it's pure Americana. Well, headed to Baltimore today to once again underline the fact that the policies of Obama and Clinton have failed African Americans, have failed our inner cities. Alex, let me say this. Trump is going to win. Mark my words. And by the way, you've, you've never said that before, but now you're saying Trump's going to win. I know you've got to go, but can you come back and do two minutes on Trump winning? Or if you got to go, I understand. Uh, you know what? I have another... Uh, I know you got to go. All right. right, Roger, we'll talk to you soon. Come back tomorrow uh, then. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Friday for sure. I want you to come back and elaborate on Trump winning. Stone now says Trump is going to win. All right. Thank you so much. We'll be back. We're